We know that in this type of power supply, if take out the IC, the circuit will turn on, but it will generate a high voltage at the output. The IC is responsible for controlling the circuit, but it does not play a role in turning on the circuit. But why does the current decrease in the output of the switching power supply? In switching power supplies like this circuit, in addition to the voltage, the current in the output should be suitable, so that the device can function normally. These types of devices produce a good current at the output. It depends on the device model, like 10 amps, with 20 amps, and even more. The problem with this device is that when the consumer connects to the device, the output voltage decreases and the device is not able to meet the needs of the consumer. First, I want to try the device. I turn on the device and connect a lamp to the output of the device. Let's see if it can light the lamp or not. Then I will explain the device problem to you. I connect the device to the city electricity using a series lamp. If the device is damaged or has a connection, the series lamp in the city electricity line turn on and show that there is a problem in the circuit. Well, there is no problem with the device. I will measure the output voltage. We have almost a 6 volt in the output. An unusual sound is heard from the device. Now I connect a lamp to the output. The lamp did not turn on well and the voltage dropped to a great extent. Well, what do you think could be the cause of this problem? In this type of power supply circuit, the device will not be restarted until we disconnect the device from the power supply and reconnect it to the city power. So, let's see what part is the problem. In this type of SMPS, a transistor, diode, and capacitor are used to prevent short circuit and shutdown of the device. We call this part of the circuit a short circuit. But how does this circuit work? The switching IC used in this circuit is TL494, similar to KA7500. This IC can generate two square pulses at the same time. Of course, Provided that pin 13 of this IC has a voltage of 5 volts, this mode is called push-pull, and these pulses are called PWM. The pulses generate are at pin 8 and 11. Pin 8 and 11 are actually the collector of two transistors in the IC. So, there should be two other pins for the emitter pins of these two transistors. These pins are number 9 and 10. The designer decides how to use this IC in switching power supply. For example, in a circuit, it can be output from pins 8 and 11, but in circuits such as car amplifiers, we have output at pin 9 and 10. But in this circuit, the output are on pin 8 and 11. These pulses reach the base of two amplifying transistors, which amplify the pulses. Amplified pulses do not reach the base of power transistor directly. Rather, they first enter the drive transformer or pulse transformer. This transformer works as an oscillator, but it also has another important role. 
If remove the IC from this circuit, the circuit will turn on and start working. Because in this circuit, it is the pulse transformer that initiates the switching. And after the switching start and voltage is generated by the auxiliary coil, the voltage required start the IC is provided. And from now on, the IC takes over the control of this circuit. If there is no IC, according to the main transformer, a certain voltage will be created at the output. Therefore, after the IC take control of the circuit, by the feedbacks that are taken from the voltage and current at the output and reach the pin 1 and 2 as well as 50 and 60 of the IC, the current and voltage at the output will be adjusted. I will talk more about this in future videos. Now, back to the short circuit. When there is a short circuit in the output, a large current is generated in the output. If this connection continues and the short circuit is not activated, the main transistor of the circuit will be damaged. Well, how does the short circuit know that there is a lot of current at the output? It does this with the help of a transistor and a resistor divider. There are two resistors here that act as voltage sampler. It is similar to a voltage sampler for the voltage feedback circuit that reaches pin 1 of the IC. The value of these two transistors has been determined by the designer in such a way that its transistor is on during the normal operation of the device. The collector of this transistor is connected to the reference voltage of 5V. The emitter pin is connected to 0V. So, when the transistor is on, the reference voltage of 5V will reach 0V through the emitter, and virtually no voltage will be seen in the collector pin. There is a diode number 1N4148 on the collector. The reason for the existence of this diode is to prevent the return of the voltage from the reference pin, which I will show in the map. The stripped head of the diode is connected to pin 4 of the IC. Now, what is the role of pin 4 in the IC? This pin is dead time control. But, what does dead time mean? The pulses produced by this IC are not simultaneously activated because the designer has connected pin 30 to the reference voltage of 5V. If pin 30 is not connected to 5V, the generated pulses will be simultaneous, but this is not the case in this circuit. So, we have two pulses consecutively in this IC. The same push-pull. That is, the first pulse turn on and off, and then the second pulse turn on. There is a short interval between these two pulses, which we call the time. If this short time interval does not exist, the power transistor will turn on simultaneously and be damaged. The task of pin 4 is to determine the time interval between these two pulses. The longer this time, the main transistor will be on for less time. Therefore, less current will be generated in the circuit output. I remind you again that I will explain more about switching power supply in future videos. For now, our discussion is about the short circuit. The stripped head of the diode is connected to the 4 pin of the IC. So, if there is a short circuit in the output of the circuit, the voltage in the output of the circuit goes to 0 volts. So, there will be no voltage in the base pin of the short circuit transistor. This transistor is turned off and the connection between the emitter and collector is cut off. The reference voltage of 5V, which was connected to the collector, reached to pin 4 of the IC through the diode and increased the dead time to maximum. This causes the on time of the main power transistor 
to be reduced to a great extent. Therefore, a large magnetic field will not be formed in the main transformer and there is a very small voltage at the output of the device. Now, let's look at the circuit schematic. First, let's check the IC schematic. This is the schematic of the TL494 IC. Pin 8 and 11 are the pulse outputs, which are actually the collectors of the internal transistors of this IC. Pin 9 and 10 are emitters of these transistors. Pin 12 is for IC supply voltage. The voltage of this pin is provided by these two diodes and by the auxiliary coil. Pin 13 is the output. If there is voltage, the pulses will be consecutive. This pin is often connected to the 5 volt reference. Pin 14 produces a voltage of 5 volts, which is used as a reference for the error amplifier. Pin 3 is the output for error amplifier. Pin 4 is the dead time control that we discussed earlier. Pin 1, 2, 15, and 60 are inputs of amplifier errors that are used for voltage and current feedback in this circuit. Now pay attention to the circuit. This section is related to short circuit. This is a larger print. The auxiliary coil voltage has reached the collector through this zener diode and resistance. This zener is not available in most circuits. In this circuit, the reference voltage is connected to pin 4 of the IC instead of the auxiliary winding. These two resistors are the output voltage sampler of the circuit. Note that the sampler resistor are connected to the output, but the collector voltage is provided through the auxiliary coil, not the power supply output. I remind you that in this circuit, instead of the auxiliary coil voltage, the reference voltage of 5 volts is used. The capacitor C2030 is on the base pin to prevent voltage fluctuation. But what is the role of the C13 capacitor? When a short circuit occurs, this capacitor is charged through the reference voltage. This voltage reaches pin 4 through the diode and causes the dead time to remain at the maximum value. Let me say one thing. When I connect the device to the city electricity, first there is a reference voltage of 5 volt on pin number 4. This voltage reaches pin 4 of the IC through this capacitor which is connected to the 5 volt. But because the negative side of the capacitor is connected to pin 4, this voltage slowly decreases and causes the IC to perform a soft start. In fact, the dead time gradually decreases and the duty cycle gradually increases until the device reaches maximum power. The duty cycle is the same time as the pulses are on. So, when the device is on and active, there should not be much voltage on IC pin 4. When a short circuit occurs, the voltage on pin 4 increases, and this is all that happens in the short circuit of this board. That is, the short circuit is responsible for controlling the voltage on pin 4 of the IC. After short circuit, until the voltage of this capacitor, C13, is discharged, the device will not be restarted.
Now I measure the voltage on the circuit. The black lead of the multimeter is connected to the negative output. Freeze output voltage. About 6 volts. Short circuit diode voltage. About 2.8 volts. So the problem can be from the transistor or this capacitor. I check the transistor. I turn off the device. I put the multimeter on diode mode. Base and collector. Base and emitter. Well, the transistor is bad. I replace the transistor and continue the video. The transistor is defective. The device is LCRT4. I will replace the new transistor. I replace the transistor C1815. The base pin of this transistor is on the right side. Output voltage again about 12 volts. Diode voltage 0.388. Pin 4 of the IC it has the same voltage. I connect a lamp to the output. The lamp lights up well. Of course, the soft start circuit can also cause this problem. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you write me your opinion and if I will make a video about soft launch in the next video or not. Thank you for watching this video.